Let's get started right now with news you can use. Uh, we're going to do Rapid Fire Thursday tonight. First off, jumbo loan demand down 90% in the last 30 days. So these are houses that primarily over a million dollar sales price, <clears throat> which is the majority of uh, the California market, Southern California at least, uh, that demand for loans at that dollar level have dropped dramatically. Uh, number two, in a regulatory filing on Tuesday, the loan giant Loan Depot announced they are going to eliminate immediately 2,800 jobs with another 2,000 cuts coming by the end of the year. They have a total employee workforce of 8,500, so they're getting rid of 4,800, say 5,000 of 8,500. That's a big, big, big chunk. Uh, what, they're, what they're saying is that they have to aggressively cut quicker than they're expecting because of the dramatic drop in mortgage demand. Now, they focus uh, on both new homes, but primarily on refi. So the refi market is disappearing out there. Number three, you guys probably saw this kind of funky news, uh, Chinese um, housing situation. Chinese housing situation tends to mirror ours, but it tends to go a little bit in advance. Uh, and the way that the Chinese work is when they're building a new housing development, you have to put a down payment and then you have to make payments going forward even before the house is completely built. A uh, whole group of potential homeowners have decided all at once to stop making payments. I don't know exactly the situation because the Chinese government tends to throttle some of that information, uh, whether it's they decided to increase the mortgage payment because of the fact they've had to raise interest rates over there too, or uh, some other situation. But the bottom line is every single one of these buyers collectively said, we're not making any more payments. So that's a, a huge deal. And you know these things tend to go in waves. So it could start there, it could happen here. You could get a bunch of homeowners or a bunch of renters together uh, that, that all of a sudden say, we're not making any more payments. Uh, we saw this with uh, renters vis-a-vis -vis the government's tacit approval during COVID when they said, listen, you don't have to make payments. Uh, landlord's going to have to just suck on it. Sorry about that. But, you know, uh, you have to let these people stay for free. Um, California finally finished our, lifted our moratorium on evictions yeah, at the end of June. So just about 10, uh, 14 days ago. Uh, and the California Supreme Court came in and said, you have to, anybody who's got an application in for COVID relief, whether they can make a payment or not, they can now stop making payments again. So it's we're back to this just goofy, crazy, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, we're going to talk about the 10 cities that are dropping the fastest in price. Before we do that, actually, if you're ready to put that uh, chart up, let's take a look at that. And this is why, you know, even though we're a, we worry about the United States more than anything else, this is the hundred trillion dollar global economy in a single chart. Um, it, it's a pretty cool chart because, you know, we, we know that we're the biggest, but we really don't know how big some of these other countries are. You know, we tend to think Russia's big and, and things like that. They're really relatively small. The, the total economy in the United States, $25.3 trillion. That's the economic value generated in the entire year of everything we do. Chinese are right behind at just about $20 trillion. Uh, next up is uh, uh, Japan would be the third largest economy in the world. Uh, and then Germany, which is bigger than the UK. So, uh, you know, you don't see Russia on here uh, or you don't, you see them there in smaller boxes around it. But we've got a much bigger economy than, you know, a lot of these countries. And if, if we can't do it, uh, if something happens here or even something happens in China, it will definitely affect uh, the global economy. I mean, it's, it is a mathematical certainty. When you understand statistics, you see how that works. So it, this is a big thing. Um, and we're going to have to keep an eye on what's going on in China because it, it tends to, like I said, run in cycles. It can happen here. All right, let's talk about the 10 cities right now, the last month that are taking it in the shorts the hardest. This is These are cities that have had to discount their prices the most, the deepest, the quickest. We're going to go from 10th to the worst. So at the bottom of the list, is the city of Indian. Now, these are places that 
if you own a house, you better price it and you think it's worth 300 now, you probably better try and sell it for 275 because by the time you get a buyer in there, you may be down at 250. I mean, these things are collapsing quick. Uh, tenth, Indianapolis, Indiana. Ninth, Tampa, Florida. Eighth, Portland, Oregon. Six, uh, seventh, Seattle, Washington. Sixth, right here, Sacramento, California, right here in California. And uh, fifth would be Grand Rapids, Michigan. Fourth, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, then third is Seattle, um, I'm sorry, Salt Lake City. <clears throat> Second is Denver, Colorado. And at the top of the list, and this is one that we've been talking about for probably six to eight months, we knew this is going to be the top. Boise, Idaho is the worst market in the U.S. right now in terms of holding value. 62% uh, of the sales are going below ask price. That's a dramatic number. Uh, in, in the go-go-go market uh, that we had a year ago, like 2% of the sales were going below the ask price, 98% at or above. Now, plus 60% is, is going below. So, you know, we're seeing this thing play out across the country. Uh, the, the safety markets, in my opinion, are still the smaller markets. The metrics that I've used in the past are still holding up. They are, uh, let me just give you the quick list again. Uh, the areas I think you guys should be involved in are smaller cities. Uh, they tend to be in states that have a good economy, a lot of jobs, and jobs that are based on different things. So if you think of, for example, Silicon Valley and the San Jose area of California, it's primarily based on internet type stuff, right? It's, it used to be a big farming area. Now it's, it's internet based, uh, Facebook, Apple, uh, so on and so forth. You want to be in an area that has three or four different sources of income. So you want manufacturing, you want uh, agrarian or agriculture if you can, uh, you, you want you know tech uh, like Silicon Valley, you want three or four or five different types of things uh, all to be bases of employment in that area. You wanna be uh, near a college or colleges, a, a decent sized college, because uh, 60 plus percent of people who end up graduating from college end up living in that area in which the college is located. Um, and you want to be also near a lot of natural resources as much as possible. Um, and not a big city once again. And primarily one of, one of my favorites is a red state. Uh, we tend, in red states, they tend to have a lot less regulations and issues and the economies frankly are just doing better. Texas, Florida, Tennessee, places like this, um, Arkansas, these areas are right now booming. The economies are still booming compared to places like here in California where we're dropping $50,000 on a million four house every week. Uh, it's going down. So, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting situation. It's uh, going to be interesting to see at the end of this contraction or what they're calling this recession that we're going to have coming up, whether it's stagflationary recession or what it is, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who's standing once the, the tide sweeps out. So that is um, the general information today for news you can use. I was going to, I had a board up here, but I didn't have my, I couldn't find my stuff. We're going to do this tomorrow. I said I was going to come back today and, and talk about, um, you know, how this, uh, how you buy using a combination of cash or no cash and you're doing a rehab. But I will get that up probably by Monday or Tuesday's meeting and we'll go through those numbers again. Actually, don't let me forget about that. Uh, we'll talk about how to do this uh, and how, how much you can afford to pay on a house where you don't have to pay anything up front. So you buy it subject to, you wanna do a rehab, you're not putting cash into the property. Uh, that's a golden way to go right now. It's one of these unique, out of the 15 ways to buy and 15 ways to sell, it's one of the really unique ones. And I think it's one that everybody needs to master quickly. So I will go through the numbers as soon as I have pins that can write on my whiteboard. <laughs> so we'll go from there. Anyway, that's it for news you can use for today.